Hello and welcome to my first episode of Between Two Inflatable Toilets with Randy Cryo. First topic will be running or ultra running on a low budget, a shoestring less budget. I am a firm believer that run, running should be as close to free as possible adventure should be attainable for the, those without a large budget and any money invested in running gear good nutrition is a phenomenal investment with a great return over the past eight and a half years or so of injury free running i am close to having done a a nearly 60 ultra marathons and doing so on a very modest budget uh, I picked up a, a few ideas like cheap sunglasses uh, I think I, I picked up five of these pairs of knockarounds for $25 during one of their super sales and the cheap sunglasses are oftentimes the best sunglasses for most runners Running shoes are a huge expense. Um, many runners are now wearing maximalist shoes that can easy, easily run $150 per pair. Some of those shoes um, might only go 300 miles. So, you know, people are oftentimes spending close to 50 cents per mile for running. Uh, um, my solution to that is pretty simple. I don't really wear shoes for running, uh, very seldom. Uh, oftentimes I'll run barefoot. Winter is when I go pure barefoot and spend zero on socks and shoes. Uh, but most of the year I'm running in uh, warache style sandals. Uh, these things are good for thousands of miles in my experience. Um, this would be for or a very tough course on a, a long race and they might run $100, $120 per pair. And this is more of a training sandal, uh, closer to being barefoot. And I believe these run $40 and have a 5,000 mile warranty. So you can do the math. So with the sandals, I very rarely wear socks. And so therefore I very rarely spend any money on socks. And additionally, with the minimalist uh, zero drop footwear and th th that combined with running barefoot, uh, um, I've managed to be injury free ultra running for over eight and a half years, which means zero dollars spent on orthopedists or chiropractors. So that's all fantastic. Uh, lots of money saved there, but I truly feel like the biggest savings hopefully will come in decades uh, where I'm seeing lots of people needing their ankles, knees, and hips replaced. Um, I'm hoping to keep moving on the original equipment thereby saving tens of thousands of dollars um, and a lot of pain. If you run with whole bananas, you don't need to put them in a plastic bag, save your money, and the skin is biodegradable. At ultra marathons, oftentimes I can camp in a tent or sleep in the back of my minivan. After my three longest 100 mile races, 35 to 37 hour races, I saved on hotel rooms and slept in the back of our 03 Honda Odyssey minivan on this very comfortable memory foam trifold mattress. One night of not paying a hotel room can cover the cost of this investment. More than 20 years ago, long before I took up ultra running, I stopped paying to get my hair cut. Believe it or not, this is free. Um, a pair of clippers, maybe once every 10 years, um, at a cost of maybe $25. And about every two weeks or so, I just simply trim my hair, uh, which not only saves about $300 a year in fees, uh, but at the time I calculated it would save me at least 30 hours per year. 
There's no need for a hair dryer or a comb. Uh, it's just simply pat dry and go. Personally, I run my ultras, all my 100 milers with no pacer and crew to simplify logistics, uh, be, become more self-reliant, and also to dramatically cut the, the investment in the race. Personally, I've never flown to a race. I try to keep it within driving range or even very local to s save even more transportation cost. Waraches have no shoelaces, hence the shoestring less budget. So keeping all of these costs down means more races for Randy. Because I show up at races generally wearing uh, sandals with no, no socks, I automatically have a, a little bit of a homeless guy look. Uh, but additionally, I tend to wear dollar and two dollar shirts. I believe I paid either a dollar or two dollars for this quarter zip long sleeve tech shirt left over from a race. So if you know when your local running club is going to sell off their extra stuff, uh, try to be there. Um, I bought a couple of these uh, windbreaker rain jackets for a dollar or two each and have used them so many times. I've found the utility of these simple buffs to be pretty amazing. Um, you can go on YouTube and search all the different ways to use these. Uh, but generally, I'll wear one or two on my head and on a cold night below 30 degrees um, with two of these on um, and go running up and down hills, I found that it's pretty convenient to kind of control body temperature by simply adjusting these above or over my ears. So I found it doesn't require a lot of expensive gear. Um, sale items and repurposed reused items will work. Uh, layering works. Camping in Walmart parking lots has proved to be reasonably comfortable, safe so far. Um, it, there's a last minute opportunity to uh, purchase needed gear before or maybe some medicines after a tough race. When camping at Walmart, you know, they know that you're going to probably come in and spend some money on food or whatever, uh, but it's fantastic to have access to the bathroom. By making running a core part of my lifestyle, I've been able to trim down and become extra healthy. Uh, thereby dramatically cutting healthcare costs. By generally doing most of my training runs from home, um, obviously I'm saving gas and transportation expenses, uh, creating less pollution. Oftentimes I'll combine that with exercising our dog, um, so it's good um, multitasking. And oftentimes after a hot summer run, I'll just simply jump into the shower and wash my gear um, as I clean myself. I tend to avoid the super popular overcrowded races where people will pay any amount to get in. Um, I found that inaugural races, uh, local races can be a whole lot of fun and adventure. If you search for discount codes, uh, register early, um, or sign up for series of races, you can often get substantial discounts, better deals on those packages. Typically, I'll prepare my own food to eat before and after a race, uh, thereby getting better quality for a lower price. I have now been on a 100% plant food-based diet for a full nine years. Um, this has allowed me or helped me to become injury free, recover faster, spend almost no time or money with um, doctors. By going uh, barefoot, minimalist, and plant based in diet, I virtually never get a headache. Um, I no longer wear my bifocals, so I don't spend money on, on that. Um, I don't even generally buy sunscreen because a, an all-plant-based diet protects our skin from sun damage and helps prevent headaches. So if I can employ a low-cost diet, 
that also dramatically reduces risk for um, all chronic diseases, um, obviously that's a big savings near term and long term. Another way that I might save a little bit of money is by donating blood products, platelets and plasma uh, locally. Um, savings could come, you know, I get a lot of free shirts, hats, scarves, mugs, and so forth. So I saved some money there. Uh, but the main point of that is helping to save other people's lives. And if you are healthy enough to do so, why not? Also by donating blood products, um, we do get some interesting biofeedback in terms of the monitoring our heart rates, blood pressure, and especially our heme score, our iron level. I've learned a good deal about nutrition, um, which, eats, which foods to eat, how much fluid to have before donating, and so forth. This Solomon hydration vest was fairly expensive. Uh, but it's gone on, on over f going on four years old, and recently I stitched several places back together. So uh, sometimes uh, a simple repair job uh, might be able to get you a few extra years worth of use from expensive gear. I believe that my trekking poles have helped me save money. Uh, not only do they help me finish races in sandals that I might not otherwise be able to finish, but I've now learned to run 100 mile races without falling a single time. Uh, it seems like I see a good number of runners who fall down and hurt their hands and arms or other body parts through falling. Uh, by simply investing some money in a decent set of trekking poles, I think over the long haul you're going to get that investment back uh, uh, by magnitudes. About 20 years ago, after becoming aware that I was highly intolerant to yeast, I needed to give up alcohol, uh, which ended up being a great blessing and a huge money saver. So not only do I not suffer from hangovers or have to worry about driving issues, now I'm the designated driver, never have a hangover, and have, I'm sure I've saved many thousands of dollars on uh, alcohol bills, restaurant tabs, and so forth. And hey, a runner's high is free. All you have to do is earn it. So with all this money saved, I've been able to put about a 20-fold increase in my investment for show props. I believe that if we are actively and frequently grateful for what we have, especially what's free, um, we'll probably end up with more of it. Um, I tend to see a good number of ultra runners uh, who focus on the suffering and the pain and thereby probably create more of it. Um, I think this stuff should be mostly fun and should feel really good most of the time. And if I'm not experiencing that, um, maybe there's something wrong. You can find your own free humor in this cr crazy sport as well. Um, coming home this past Monday from a really tough 100 miler, I had a moment of appreciation uh, for the absurdity of what I was doing. Um, I was having to use my arm to use the parking brake on our van. And um, so I flash back to the Jeff Foxworthy redneck jokes and they practically write themselves for ultra runners. If you have ever had to use your arm to release the parking brake in your vehicle, after a race, you might be an ultra runner. If you've ever looked at a tortilla shell and realized not only is it great food, but you could also use it for an emergency bathroom break, you might be an ultra runner. If one of your fellow competitors has ever fallen asleep in a porta john, you might be an ultra runner. I am Randy Cryle, these are my inflatable toilets, and I have been ha happy to be your host.